In this video, we'll be going step by step through the week zero CAD guide, where we'll be making a rivet. For access to these slides, besides seeing them in the bottom left corner of the video, you can click on the link in the description. If you haven't learned how to boot up Inventor yet, either by using VLab or by downloading it to your computer, go to the launching Inventor video on the playlist. But if you know what you're doing, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be booting up Inventor and you'll see immediately that there is a part in the top left and this will, is what we'll click to create a new part. There are a couple ways to do it, but that's probably the easiest and the fastest. As soon as you do that, you'll see that on the left side, you'll see this feature tree and as we add sketches and features to this part, it will expand and we'll be able to edit things from there. So we're going to start a sketch by clicking Start 2D Sketch, and you'll see the three planes in space that we can start a sketch on. Um, usually it doesn't really matter unless you're really wanting to make it easier for yourself when you put parts into assembly, um, but I generally start on the XZ plane. So once we do that, you'll see that we've started a 2D sketch, and we can make any kind of shape that's up here. So you can see that there are the basic shapes, but you can change like what kind of shape they are or how you want to draw them by clicking on these um, drop down boxes. So we'll create a circle and put it in the center here. And I can click and drag the size out and we'll left click to put it in place. And you'll see that it is purple. Now to set the dimension and say how big it is, we'll click the dimension button up there and click anywhere in the circle to set this dimension. And now we have to left click again to set where this annotation is going to go. And we'll simply type in 3 8 You can type in a decimal or a fraction uh, and the computer will know what you mean. So now that I've set this dimension, you'll see that the circle turned from purple to black. And that means it's fully constrained. So you can see in the bottom right that it is fully constrained. And that means that the computer knows every dimension um, that it needs to know. So it knows where the center is because I specifically clicked um, at the center of these axes. And it knows how big it is because I told it what the diameter is. So if, I, if it was still purple, I'd probably be able to edit how wide the circle is. And that's not any good because when we want to start moving things around, um, or editing things, things that are unconstrained sometimes behave unpredictably. Something else to note is that you, we don't want to use um, auto constrain here or fix right here. What those do is they will either assume or they'll lock dimensions into place. Um, and that's no good because we want to be in control of our whole sketch. We don't want the computer to have to assume anything. Next, we're going to create a smaller circle. So I'm gonna use the escape key to exit out of the dimension selection. If you see that um, any time you click anything up here, it'll assume that you wanna keep doing it. And so to escape, you just have to hit the escape key and you'll return to the regular cursor. And so by creating a second circle, we're not gonna use the circle command again, we're going to be use offset. And what this does is it creates a similar shape within or outside of uh, whatever you click on. And so we'll go within and the dimension is going to be a 16th of an inch within the original shape. And so all we have to do is type in 1 16th. And you'll see that because of my significant figures that are already programmed in, I only see three decimal places. Um, and so it's rounding up, uh, of course. Now you can change it to um, exact fractions, or you can change it to uh, more decimal places shown within, if you go to the tools tab and you can mess around with application and document settings, but otherwise it doesn't really matter unless you're really trying to be specific about things. It's a personal preference kind of thing. So now we're going to finish this sketch and we're going to extrude. And what that does is it will tell us how far we want this shape to become three-dimensional and we'll set it to 1.8 inches. 
And now that you've done that, we've created the first part of our rivet. Keep in mind that if you want to extrude a sketch, you'll want to have a full enclosed area before you'll be able to do it. So now we're going to create another sketch on top of this cylinder we've created, and you can create a sketch on any flat surface. And so we'll click it here. And now it's acting as if this whole thing is two dimensional again. And so because of that, if we want to interact with any geometry that is below this two dimensional surface, we'll have to use project geometry. Uh, in this case, it's not necessary, but it's nice to be safe with how much we want to interact with the geometry. So using project geometry never hurts. And now we will create a circle with a 3 fourths inch diameter. And so we'll go ahead and escape out of project geometry and make a circle centered here. And we'll make it, for the fun of it, I'll make it 0 0.75 inches. And then we will finish this sketch and then create another extrusion. And this time you'll see that I can click on any of these different versions of circles. And so we want to make sure that we're careful with what we click. And so we'll click this one, but instead of going up, we want it to go the reverse direction. So you can see flipped and we can change the distance and we want it to be 1 16th of an inch. And just like that, that's a very basic rivet. But what if I told you this isn't the only way to make the part? I mean, it makes sense that there will always be multiple ways to make parts, and sometimes some will be more efficient or faster than others. So let's make it a different way. This time we're going to use not extrusions, but another um, kind of feature, which is called revolve. So I'm going to start a new part. Uh, with a new sketch. And because I'm going to be drawing it differently, I'll put it on the XY plane. And so we're going to use, um, you could use a rectangle. It says to use a rectangle in the slides, but I personally like to use lines because I have a little more control. So what we're going to draw first is a construction line. Now a construction line is a personal reference and it won't be considered um, part of a Part of a feature when you want to draw it. Um, it's, it's very useful for yourself. So we're going to draw a construction line that's 1.8 inches. Uh, and to make it a construction line, all you have to do is escape out of the line command and then right click this line here and then click construction. Now something to note is whenever you select something, it's best to select it first with left click and then you can right click anywhere to uh, interact with it. Sometimes what will end up happening is you'll have a second um, part over here that you want to interact with, but you've already selected something over here and you'll accidentally interact with the wrong part. So you just want to be careful with what's already selected. So we're going to create a, another line. And this is step by step, so you can fast forward through this if you already know what you're doing here. So we're going to go up 1.8 inches. And I'll click this box to reorient myself. There we go. And then let's see here. I'm actually going to start from the bottom here. And it'll snap into place with the green circle uh, at convenient points that it thinks you want to work with. So you'll see that the width of this is 1 16th. And then we'll go up. And you'll see that there's the distance of this next leg isn't specified exactly. You'll see that it's going to be 1 16th from the top of that line. But how far is that? What is 1.8 minus the 16th? Now, you could probably calculate that in your head or take the time to pull out your calculator. But instead, you can also realize the inventor itself knows some basic calculations. So you can just say 1.8 and then minus 1 16th. And it does exactly that dimension. 
And we'll do the same thing over here. So how far is this next line? It's going to be um, 3 eighths minus 0.125 minus a sixteenth. Uh, that's a perfect distance. And then you can see that it also snaps into place when it's parallel with another point. And so we can just go ahead and do that. And you'll see that these distances are exactly correct. But you'll see also that all of these lines are purple uh, and that there are two dimensions needed. So let's try to figure out what these dimensions were missing. So we're missing the distance between these two, which is 0.125 or an eighth. And then you'll see, let's see here, what are we, what else are we missing? So if you try to create a dimension that already exists, you'll get this error box. So you'll want to cancel it because we don't want to have unnecessary dimensions. So let's see here, what are we missing? I actually am not totally sure. So there's a tool we can use here. You can right click and go show all constraints. Another thing we can do is we can just try to drag stuff around and I'll see that once I I, I can only drag it in this direction, which means that there's an issue here. So I'm going to use one of my constraints within this top box over here. Um, and so there are two that are very useful. There's a vertical constraint and a horizontal constraint. Um, and so you want some things to line parallel to the x-axis. So we want this point and this point to be parallel with the x-axis. And one, once we do that, You'll see that it's all turned black, it's fully constrained, and we're good to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to finish sketch, and we can zoom out a little bit. You can click this box, or you can um, use different controls if you have a, a physical mouse, it's great. Um, I personally have a 3D mouse, which, unless you're really familiar with one already, I wouldn't recommend, but it's a lot of fun for me. So you'll see me manipulate things around um, relatively quickly, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and revolve, and so it sees this face and it already knows this is the only face that exists, and it already selects it. But now we want to select an axis of rotation, and that's where, so you can, if you click on ax, select axis, then it'll highlight itself, and we want to select what we want to rotate around. And so we can select this construction line we drew earlier, and boom! it automatically goes 360 degrees and we have this full rivet. Very quickly, only two steps. So you really have to think about what kind of part you want to make. If it's going to be um, symmetric around an axis, sometimes it's easier to make a revolve instead of trying to do several complicated extrusions. Or maybe um, Sometimes the extrusions are easier to use than revolves. It's really up to what you're comfortable with and what you think might be more efficient. But just like that, you've made a rivet in two different ways. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, go ahead and go to the advanced CAD guide for week zero. Or if you think you have any questions, go ahead and go to the Piazza or email any of your instructors and we'll try to help you as best as we can. Hope to see you next week.